All right, so let's start with your most recent declaration for president. Um, everybody was, um, was excited to hear of your interest. However, what, what, what's happening in your party? Because it seems like they have not actually agreed on this um, selection of who their candidates will be. So what's going on within your party? And juxtapose that with your desire to become president. Do you think you have a chance within the party to get the ticket to represent um, um, your party the presidential candidate? Asking, asking your question, one, what's happening in my party, the APC, uh, is uh, very common with Nigerian politics. And it's not peculiar with the uh, APC. I think this is what we've been trying to get right since the inception of democracy. Uh, we're going to have a convention. This has been changed and changed and changed. And all because uh, I guess the party is trying to, uh, trying to put our us together and, and see how these positions will ensure unity within the party. Why is it so hard for you and the current um, administration of your state to have a smooth transition? Governors come, governors go, and even though different parties, but the people of Imo State should be more important than the politics. Why is there so much, there seem friction. to be, at least based on reports, there seem to be so much um, this, um, friction between you? I think if you might take his scriptural, scriptural uh, perspective, you say when the weekend is in power, the people mourn. Or my people perish for where there's no vision. I, I think I don't know because I don't know any fiscal asset to do it. But, but say that, that Roach has a culture for what you might know about me, that I am a peace loving person and I cannot hurt her. I love people, I love the people, I love the needy. All that preoccupies my mind is to go out how to look for poor children anywhere they can be and see how I can cope with their life and help the widows and everything. My eight years as a government, people were happiest man. Widows could no longer look for money to pay for their children's school fees or sell their household to pay for school fees. I made education for peace return. I engaged the youth to work. Even when they became crazy, as which is normal, because when you don't provide job for youth, you must engage them, at least to be patient. All so right, this is what we will say. So the question about of whether we are quarreling or there's nothing to quarrel about. I have no issue with the government whatsoever, and that is my word of honor. I'm rather on the defensive. But what can you say about a man who is keeping, being treated, pushed, harassed, is is in laws and relations being harassed every day. What do we do? And I have come on public television. I want peace. I just scream on my back there. I said, let peace reign in Nigeria. All right. I have said this several times. What are your takes on this issue of South Igbo presidency? I mean, many have said that rightfully, for the sake of equity, it should the pendulum should tilt or should go to the southeast. But your party. Is, is, is telling us categorically that if I agree for the South, they didn't say Southeast or South South or Southwest. They just said South. In your view, what are you doing, or do you think, or do you agree that the pendulum should, should come to the Southeast? And what are you doing to ensure that the Southeast does indeed get the ticket? I can answer, let me answer, be brief on this question. So we'll be, oh, this has been overflowed. And I think this should be an old uh, discussion now. Uh, what, what, uh, first and foremost, when you talk about uh, Igbo presidency, we don't have Hausa presidency, neither we don't have the Uba presidency. Uh, when this is captioned like Igbo presidency, as if you have a president to run Igbo affairs, it's not the one to uh, There's no point um, trying to trivialize the matter by saying Igbo presidency, just like we don't have uh, Yoruba presidency, Hausa presidency, Efik presidency. We have a nation, one nation called Nigeria, and uh, we should be proud of this country. Okay. But in my case, I'm not running for president as uh, an Igbo man. I'm running for president as a Nigerian. And I'm not going to lead Igbos. I'm leading, I will lead the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But what we're talking about here is equity and not democracy. Equity for peace, equity for unity. Uh, because if you talk about democracy, democracy will always allow you to, those with the highest numbers should always control to rule. But we're talking about equity that Nigerians may remember 
that of the tripod upon which this nation is built, this particular leg of the tripod has never been given opportunity to try to lead the affairs of this country. Talking about your candidacy, because that's where we are today, um, the present day Nigeria is one of um, insurgency in the north, um, constant kidnapping on our roads, you know, widespread poverty, out, millions of out of school children, and uh, an administration that seems to be struggling to handle it or even understand it. What do you think you will be bringing to the table? What are the experiences and um, achievements you think you have that would make a difference if you were elected president? What I'm bringing to bear in this country is, is, is passion, passion and vision. And that's what I think I have. If I don't have this, I have no business with them. And when you talk about insecurity, you talk about uh, poverty, lack of power, the question I'll ask you is, uh, what is it that Nigeria has? Or uh, what is it that America has that Nigeria does not have? What is it that Japan has that we don't have? Or what is it that the UAE has that we don't have? Even Korea of yesterday. This question is asked. There's nothing God has given to America that has not given to Nigeria more. There's nothing God gave to Japan that didn't give to Nigeria more. What we lack, what we lack is management of the resources God has given to us. And there are two resources given by God to mankind. It is called human and material resources. These are two free gifts of nature. So, my dear, your problem is not insecure. I need to find out your thoughts because Ashua Jew has declared his presidential ambition, and I know you're friends with him. So, how has your relationship with him been so far since you also declared? Are you guys still friends? And do you think he has a better chance or you have a better chance? Well, let me say something. Um, the one thing that I condemn recently is the campaign of calumny against Aswadu Ametini. I think Nigeria campaigns from based on issues, not on person's health or person's uh, uh, age and stuff like that. I don't believe in that. I believe that vision should count. And most people that you see in this country have ambition, they have no vision. If you come to practicality of vision, most of them will resign. Some of them are seen only 2023. They don't see beyond 2023. I, as a culture, I have vision. I see beyond 100 years to come in this country. And my project is to lay foundation for that 100 years to come. Okay. This is different. When you, I sit down with Aswaju one on one, uh, I'm like, I can profile his solution for this country. And I tell my own, if his is better than mine, I'll subsume my ambition. Okay. My ambition from him.